We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. Today's video, we're going to continue working on this Imperial Warhound Titan, and we are going to start doing the silver lining and all of the metal in the legs and the guns and on all this filigree around the Titan. In this first video, we're going to lay down the base work for the colors, and then in our next video, I'm going to show you how to do some weathering and highlights. As always, if you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in future how-to videos, leave them down below. The first thing we're going to do is we need to protect the paint job that we've already put on this Titan. So we're going to use frog tape to tape off the sections that we've already painted. Now you guys can see I'm putting this tape on top of the areas that are supposed to be lined silver. And I'm going to do the same thing on the legs and the hood. Even though those sections are going to be silver, it's going to save me a lot of time to just tape them off right now and then touch them up with a brush later. If I were to try and just tape the very inside of all these areas and leave that lining untaped, it would take me so long to get the tape just perfect. So I'm kind of just tearing off pieces with my hands and laying them on the model. It's kind of like a crazy jigsaw pattern as I try and get it to conform to the awkward shapes that I'm trying to tape off. If I'd have to, I would say err on the side of taping off too much of the model rather than risking having to go back and touching up the reds and the stripes later. You can also put the tape down and trim around the edges with an X-Acto knife if that's easier for you. Honestly, my fingernails are there, so I use them. I also want to make sure that I run my thumbs along the edge so I get a good seal against the model and I'm not going to get any paint leaking into the cracks of the tape. This step can kind of be time consuming and a little bit annoying, but it's going to save me so much time later when I'm able to just quickly get this base coat of silver down without having to worry about anything that I've already painted. Here's all the pieces looking nice and fluorescent and ready for me to get started with the silver step. We're going to use Lead Belcher Air Paint, or you could just use Lead Belcher Base Paint and do like a dry brushing step if you don't have an airbrush. The airbrush I'm going to be using today is an Iwata HP CS Eclipse. It's got a 0.3 needle. I'm spraying it with a Badger Air Compressor set to about 25 psi and with these GW air paints I'm putting them in my airbrush straight out of the pot I'm not using any kind of thinner I'm just painting them how they are now the GW airbrush colors have pretty good coverage but even still it's gonna take me a couple coats to get everything covered with this lead belcher and you can see on these areas where I've got the stripes where the first coat you can still kind of see the stripes showing through it takes me a couple coats to get them entirely covered but I want to make sure that I spray one area, I let that area dry while spraying another area, and I don't go back to the first before it's dried completely. So I don't create a pool of paint, I'm just creating several overlapping layers to get the nice coverage that I want. I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside of these leg plates, and I'm also going to spray the underside of the hood even though they're areas that you don't really see you kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of them and we don't want to leave any part of this Titan unpainted we want to make sure that we get all of the nooks and crannies you can see right here as I'm spraying the feet that I forgot to tape off the very back toe so I'm gonna have to go back and touch that up with black here's all the pieces after the first coat of lead belcher we're going to go ahead and highlight this and we're going to go all the way up to Runefang Steel Air Color. I'm doing this because this is going to kind of be an undercoat highlight. It's going to tint the paint that I'm going to put on top when I start to weather this. And I'm worried that if I went with a more intermediate color of silver, it wouldn't show up after I put the paint on top. Even so, I'm going to be very light when I spray this. I'm not going to put a lot of coverage. I just want to do a lot of small layers and kind of just bring out a few sections where the sun would hit this and give it a zenithal highlight. I'm also going to be putting this highlight on the weapons. I'm kind of hitting the very back and the very front of the guns. I also want to hit the top of this hip joint 
the very back of this leg joint and the tops of all of the toes. All right, with our airbrushing done, we're gonna go ahead and peel the tape off of all of our pieces. Even though I know that nothing's really changed underneath, there's something just so gratifying about peeling this tape off and seeing things as a whole. Our next step is gonna to be to take our brush and to do all of this edge work. We're also going to be painting all of the Aquilias on this model silver, as well as any of the rivets. I'm painting the Aquilia silver because I'm basing this off of the Iron Hunger Titan, which is part of the War Manipul Red Naga. And all of the Red Naga Titans appear to have silver Aquilias, though it would look really good if you did them in a bronze or some other kind of contrasting metallic color. So we're going to again be using Lead Belcher this time as a base paint. I'm also going to be adding a drop or two of Lamian Medium into my paint to help the flow. I'm not going to be putting a lot in there just because I feel like metallics are more likely to separate than other varieties of paint, but just a little bit will help me. I'm also going to keep a dab of clean water on my palette. Having this water there lets me occasionally dip my brush into the water when my brush is feeling thirsty. So if I'm painting along and suddenly the paint doesn't flow like it should, it's starting to feel like it might be getting a little bit dry, I just dip my brush into the clean water. The bristles absorb it without really mixing into the paint, but it does make it so that I have a longer working time with the paint that's in my brush. And I can also go a longer time before I have to clean my brush, which also saves me time. I'm using the edge of my brush more than the tip. I'm also bracing myself as much as I can for added stability. You can see that I use my pinky to brace. I'm also bracing my elbows on the table and I'm bracing my wrists against each other. I also move the model around as much as I need to so that I can get a really comfortable painting position. So I move the model rather than moving my hand. That way I'm the most stable and I can get the cleanest lines. You can see when I show you the side that there's a slight color difference between the areas that I airbrush and the areas that I'm doing actual brush work. So I wanna make sure that I run my brush along this entire outer edge. I'm also going to do a little bit of dry brushing to kind of blend that transition on some of the larger areas where it's gonna be the most noticeable. So these areas right against the edge, I'm just gonna take a dry brush filled with Lod Belcher paint and use it to blend the transition. The next step is to make sure that we get this inside edge. I'm gonna be switching to my detail brush and I'm just going to very carefully be running it along this inside lip. When you're using a smaller brush, the paint inside the bristle gets dry a lot faster, so it's very important to make sure that you use something to keep that paint wet to give you a longer working time. Whether that's mixing your paint with a little bit more medium or using the drop of water, whatever works for you. While I have my detail brush, I'm also gonna go ahead and paint these rivets. Again, I'm gonna move the model around to make it more comfortable for me to paint. So I'm going to be painting the top of all of the rivets in a line. Then I'm going to move the model and paint the side of all the rivets in a line. And then I'll move the model again to make sure that I get the other side as well. This way I can make sure that I get all of the round corners of the rivets, which can sometimes be hard to get, pretty quickly and neatly as well. Here's all the pieces after the silver lining is done. It really is starting to bring them together. It calms down those bright stripes and it brings something that unifies the whole look. I'm going to be doing a highlight of Iron Breaker. I'm using Iron Breaker instead of going straight to Rune Fang like I did with the airbrush because I'm going to be painting this with a brush and I have a little bit less control over blending the edges. I did mix this paint with a little bit of Lamian Medium. We're going to catch the top of this hood, the center of the Aquilia, and really down this whole middle section. I'm kind of doing a process where I put the paint down, then I wipe the paint off and blend the transition a little bit. I'm not too worried about making sure this is entirely blended though, because again, this is kind of an under highlight and I'm gonna be putting weathering on top. So any awkward transitions are gonna be caught when I do a final highlighting stage. 
We're also going to make sure that we highlight the head of this Wolfhound Titan. Now the guns and the legs we were able to get with the airbrush, but the hood and the head were mostly taped off. The area where I want to concentrate this highlight is in the front of the nose and this little corner right underneath the eyes. I'm also going to go ahead and catch the middle section on the back of the head, bringing that highlight down the arrow as well. Here's all the pieces with their silver base coating done. And you could stop here if you wanted to, if you'd like a nice clean metal look. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, I have another one where I'm going to do some shading and weathering on this metal in the mini Wargaming Vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a Vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can get a 7 day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini Wargaming Vault. So go ahead, click the link and happy Wargaming.